Hey y'all, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to build Tailwind V4 and include plugins like Daisy UI with .NET and Docker. And really mainly focused on web apps here, those using ASP.NET, which is the default and standard really um, for web apps with .NET. So I use Tailwind to style most of my apps as I find it fast to work with, flexible, and it has a ton of UI examples on the web. For example, the you know AIs are really good at Tailwind because they can remember everything, often not so great at uh, pure regular CSS. Now, Tailwind before changed how the build and configuration system works, and so I needed to upgrade from my previous Tailwind and .NET and Docker guide, and so that's what we're doing here. And so in this post, we'll talk through using Tailwind before to style ASP.NET web apps using Docker containers for orchestra orchestrating the build. All right, first let's give a little overview of like what project we're building to give you more context on like how these Docker files are getting used, how these styles are being used. And so in previous posts, we built an example full stack app from the ground up using F Sharp and Falco. And we'll be using this app as a foundation to showcase adding Tailwind styles to it. Now I wanna note that like F Sharp builds and runs on .NET and Falco is really just a lean wrapper around ASP.NET. And so these same steps will apply to a C Sharp app or any app running a different flavor of ASP.NET. The core ideas behind how to serve or how to build a Tailwind output, how to actually serve it from your ASP.NET backend, and then how to use it on the front end are all the same. Um, I just happen to be using F Sharp uh, for my application code. And so to just give you an example of what this app looks like, I am going to open up my Hemilabs code examples repo where this is located. Um, and we can see that we are in, you know, .NET Tailwind v4 here. And then I'm going to run my Docker Compose, which spins this up. And then we can come over here to localhost 5001 to see it. And so here we see item count is nothing because I don't have any items. We just spin up the server. And then if I come over here to the create and I create a few of these and then come back, we now see that we have six and we're just, you know, outputting the total count here and all of the um, individual items down here. And then if we look at the um, styles, we can see that we're using Tailwind styles here, you know, with Max with Pros, MX Auto, and P6, and then we're using Days UI here with Table and Table Zebra. So a very minimal, simple example, you know, Tailwind and Days UI is overkill for this, but just to show you that actually the, the styles are being read in from uh, the back end here. And if we look here, we can see that it's coming from slash CSS slash Tailwind.CSS, and that's where we're actually serving our output Tailwind from our um, ASP.NET app on the back end. Okay, so that's what the app looks like. Um, we're really not going to go into details about it. So if you're curious about more, you can read the previous post in the series, single file web API, turning that into a full stack web app, and then actually containerizing that. And as a reminder, Hominians members do get full access to the full project files here on GitHub, as well as dozens of other example projects we walk through here on the blog. You also support me making more of these posts. So thank you if you're already a member. All right, so let's talk about how to build this. So here's the basic idea of how we're going to actually be building and surveying Tailwind. So I've got my project set up and I've got my all my files just in, in the main directory and then I've got all my Tailwind stuff in slash Tailwind. And to prove this to you, I've got you know my program.fs, my fs proj here, my Docker file, and then inside of Tailwind is where um, I have everything like the package.json, um, the base styles, um, and then the output directory where we'll eventually put that. And so the idea is basically we are going to build the Tailwind CSS by pulling in this folder, then pulling in the source files from, from our project itself um, so that it knows where to search for um, the Tailwind classes. This will output a cold, um, you know, productionized, if you will, Tailwind CSS. Then we're just going to build our um, ASP.NET project as usual. So this will give us the outputs from there, usually like a DLL. And then in our final step, we are going to put these together. Um, so we're basically going to take our output Tailwind and we're going to put it in the www root or where our static files live of our project and then we're going to publish that um, itself and that's how we're serving um, this productionized Tailwind. And so Tailwind is like a pretty big style library and so for production use cases it is highly recommended to use a build tool to help prune the styles down to just the styles your app needs so it's a more reasonable size to send to the client. I think it's like two and a half megs unzipped and then if you do zip it i think it's closer to like 800 or something um which is like fine like you can totally serve that but it's just kind of slow and if you're doing this a lot and you don't have like unlimited bandwidth it might you know boost your cloud costs um so it's just really recommended to 
to prune the styles because usually it'll end up being like, I don't know, less than 20 kilobytes. And this printing is usually done at build time, which implies a build step to kick it off and bundle the output styles with your app, um, as you kind of see here. So I talked about this, but I do have a Tailwind folder in my project that holds the node projects for Tailwind. And different in Tailwind V4 from Tailwind, you know, previous versions is that it specifies the source files and configuration, including any plugins you would use um, in the CSS. And so um, as usual, you know, I have all of my code here if you wanna look at it and copy and paste it, but I'm gonna open this in my editor just so you can see that like, this is what I'm actually doing and we can get some uh, syntax highlighting. And so here we are in here, I'm gonna open Tailwind, look at our Tailwind CSS. And so basically the main thing you're gonna do is import um, Tailwind CSS here. And then different is that we are showing our source files um, with this. And because it is a little tricky because I don't have a source file in my project directory, but this source folder actually is created um, as part of my Docker file. And so this is based on how you're building or at build time, what um, the folder structure looks like. All of this used to be um, created in, I think like tailwind.config.js or something like that. Um, but now it's all in the tailwind.css. And then for plugins, you know, I pull in typography because I like it for typography. And then I'm pulling in Daisy UI here. I'm just to show you and prove to you that this works. And my editors have problems with this. They, they don't think that this is like valid, um, but this is, you know, the tailwind syntax and it seems to work. So uh, I don't know what to tell you. And then for package.json, it's pretty um, straightforward. I do have a dev script just so that I can, you know, build this without um, Docker if I want to, just to make sure that this pipeline's working. Um, and then I just have Tailwind CLI, typography, Daisy Y, and Tailwind CSS. And Tailwind CLI is what we're actually gonna be using to um, do the Tailwind conversion. And so I already use Docker to containerize my app, so it makes sense to leverage it to handle my Tailwind build step as well. And so as we kind of talked about, we'll be building Tailwind in a node layer, then we'll build .NET app in a .NET layer, and then we finally have a new layer just for running the ASP.NET app, where we copy the build artifacts, we place Tailwind CSS in the www root, which is where static files folders is, so it's actually served when you run it, um, and then we actually run the app. So Docker files here, we'll open up in the editor. And so here we're setting up Tailwind, and so we're starting with node 23 slim as our base layer. We're copying tailwind into the root here, running npm install. So we have all our dependencies and then we're copying um, dot slash into dot slash source. And so this is how it's matching up with our um, slash source right here. And then we're running our uh, tailwind CLI like this, reaching into our original tailwind and then we're putting it in our output folder here. The next step is to build the .NET app. We're starting off with .NET 9 SDK, pulling in our FS project and restoring it, and then actually publishing it and publishing it to slash app. And then finally, here is where we're gonna combine the two. So we're just getting a base image with ASP.NET 9, and then we're copying from our app folder, the .NET artifacts, and then we're copying from our um, styles layer and the Tailwind CSS out into our www root slash CSS slash Tailwind .css. And so now when we're trying to use this, um, we can go you know, to our, our root domain um, following this. And then finally, our entry point is just .NET web .dll. Okay, so at this point, we basically like built the Tailwind based on the styles we're using in um, our .NET app, and then now we're serving it. But now we need to talk about how do we actually style our .NET front ends with this output CSS. Now, how you style your front ends with Tailwind will depend on how you've built your front ends. Now, personally, I'm a fan of multi-page applications, and so server-side render most of my UIs with HTML. And so for those cases, I can simply serve my Tailwind CSS static files from my backend, reference it in my HTML, and then use styles. You know, this is the standard way of styling web apps. And so that's what I do. Now we'll go through code of how this looks using F Sharp and Falco with falco.markup as an HTML DSL, which is how I build most of my apps these days. But you know, as we get further into the application code, it's gonna look more and more different because I do use F Sharp and Falco, which a lot of people don't use. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. Now to serve my static files in www.root, I call use static files in my app builder. This should look familiar if you're familiar with, you know, .NET and ASP.NET. Um, you got this application builder, which helps you configure like how you actually wanna run it. Um, and use routing and use static files are both um, ASP.NET, you know, universal. Um, and the only thing here that's like really F-sharp and Falco specific is this call. Now to reference the Tailwind CSS in my HTML, I do have a base HTML template that I used to pull in common dependencies, usually like style. Sometimes I might do analytics or I might do like um, some JavaScript, like HTMX if I'm using it a lot, a lot of places. And this is how it looks in falco.markup. And you can kind of think of it as just like a, a component that returns markup. You got a head slot, body slot, footer slot. Um, this is just an HTML element, head, 
here's my meta, and then here's my link, which is a style sheet. And you can see that I'm referencing this at slash CSS slash tailwind.css, which is where it's located within that www root folder. And then finally, to use the Tailwind classes themselves, I just used a class on my HTML elements. And this should look familiar, right? This is just a div with the class on it with this max with pros and max auto p6. We've got our item count, and then to make the table, we're adding table, table zebra on it. Um, and that's how we got the front end uh, that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So yeah, that's how I used Tailwind before with .NET and Docker. Now, as a reminder, Hominians members do get full access to the project files on GitHub, everything that I showed you here and walked through, um, as well as dozens of other example projects that we walked through here on the blog. I also want to call out that CloudSeed, my F-sharp project boilerplate, includes Tailwind v4 and DZUI. So if you want to spin up a full stack F-sharp web app in a few minutes, go check that out. And that's how I start most of my projects. Now, if you like this post, you might also like the previous posts, which dive deeper into this actual app, how we built it from the ground up in this series, starting with building a single file web API with F Sharp and Falco, turning that into a full stack web app, and then finally running that um, in a Docker container to make it easier to declare dependencies as infrastructure as code, and then actually deploy it to remote servers. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.